Last year in September, when the telecom bill was first put up for public consultation, it led to a lot of social media ridicule. For the explanatory memorandum which accompanied the text which was put up for public consultation, stated that, in a way, Spectrum is similar to Atma, which is Ajar Amar, as described in the Bhagavad Gita. Like Atma, Spectrum 2 does not have any physical form, yet it is omnipresent. It is no longer a matter of ridicule. For the telecom bill, 2023 has passed through the Lok Sabha and may be transmitted to the Rajya Sabha as a money bill, which means that this may soon become a law which governs how you use your smartphones, how you connect to the internet, how you call and correspond with any kind of telecommunication services. So welcome to Amaltas Talks. And in this 15-minute video, in a non-lawyerly way, I will try to explain to you what is this bill about, what is this new law which will impact your telecommunications and what difference will it make to the lives of ordinary Indians. Here, there is a clear sign of digital authoritarianism which takes India one step closer to being a surveillance state. First, let's look at what the law regulates. And here, the telecom bill has the power for the union government to regulate and license over-the-top services such as WhatsApp, Signal and Gmail. Over-the-top services are called as such because they utilize the underlying telecom infrastructure for providing you any kind of telecommunication service. Here, there has been an unfounded hope and an undeserved servility in several public statements that such kind of OTT services, which are WhatsApp, Signal and Gmail, are excluded from the ambit of regulation of the Telecommunications Bill 2023. But this is not borne out from its text. Here, the union government firstly has the power to prescribe license conditions that may vary as per telecommunication services, which means that it can provide different kind of standards such as licensing, registration to different kind of online applications. So it may have a different set of guidelines and registrations which may be there for email service providers like Gmail or Office 360 and it may have a different kind of regulation or licensing requirement for OTT encrypted services which offer you messaging security such as WhatsApp or Signal. And here prior registration may be used by the government to weaken your privacy protections with respect to how encryption is used. This becomes very clear if you look at section 2T, which defines what is a telecommunication service, which means any service for telecommunication that can be decided by the government. And if you look at the phrase telecommunication, it says that it is defined to include transmission or reception of any messages. So, internet-based messaging and email services are included under this law and the government can, in fact, exercise licensing bars at a later point in time with respect to them. Now, how will it do it will be also covered by me with respect specifically referencing to encryption. Encryption is a technology which is used to secure several online communications. For instance, your banking transactions. But it is today very commonly used by Indians in internet-based messaging through WhatsApp. And here, the text of each message legible to the sender and the receiver, which means that the service provider or the government, which means WhatsApp signal or the government cannot read the text in the course of transmission, which means if I, Abhar Gupta, send you a text, only I can read it and you can read it and nobody else. Here the government under section 19 sub clause F has the power to notify standards for a conformity assessment that includes encryption. And as we just went over, the power of licensing for any telecommunication service includes OTT applications like WhatsApp and Signal and even Gmail. Hence, the government has mentioned encryption and the prescription of standards and also has the ability of licensing, which becomes very, very clear that it can use it to create backdoors. For instance, having the ability of snooping into your conversations or making sure, like in China, there are block lists of words in which if you send a text with, let's say, a certain word, it does not get to the other person. For instance, if you say that XYZ person is conducting this act of dictatorial excess or authoritarian, those words will not get through. And this has actually been implemented in China on platforms such as WeChat. So, quite simply, it will increase the snooping powers of the government. Which brings me to the next portion, which is with respect to interception and surveillance powers. 
the telecommunications bill of 2023 extends the colonial architecture of interception which is there under section 5 sub clause 2 of the telegraph act in fact it borrows most of its language and if you look at section 61 it basically says that same rules which is rule 419a of the telegraph rule will continue to apply under the new law and we all know that surveillance is broken in india there is no transparency the government even avoids telling the number of orders it issues for intercepting messages in india there is no oversight which is exercised either by parliament or by the courts with respect to these interception orders which is why quite often they are used for political purposes now there are two more ways how this law will end up hurting you india suffers from the highest number of internet shutdowns in the world these injuries have been felt acutely across our country by people resident in manipur rajasthan west bengal jammu and kashmir etc etc India has the dubious distinction of imposing shutdowns more than any other democratic country in the world. We do it more often with high frequency and for long periods of time. There is results in economic damage, social damage. And I've made several videos on the recent internet shutdown in Manipur, which I'm linking below. Now the telecommunications bill of 2023, rather than solving this problem, continues with it. It restates the power to impose internet blackouts without any statutory safeguards, despite court cases and even a recommendation from the Standing Committee of ID, which is a body which is tasked with studying legislation, making recommendations, so future laws or amendments to laws can be made. All of this has been ignored. Now, what these safeguards could have done would have been to increase transparency, such as the duty of the state governments to send copies of orders of internet shutdowns to the Department of Telecom and then for the Department of Telecom to maintain a central directory of orders. However, this is not part of the legislative text. This is also not being done under the rules as the previous telecom suspension rules made in 2017 will continue to be in place and will continue to be in force here. Quite simply, there will be no checks and internet shutdowns will continue to take place all over the country. Finally, the Telecommunications Bill of 2023 continues the Kartavya Kal style of imposing penalties on ordinary Indians, as has been found expression even under the Data Protection Act of 2023, in which you are required as a legal duty to give information when it is demanded from you. And if you do not do it, a fine is imposed on you. It prohibits you from false particulars or suppressing any material information while establishing your identity for availing telecom services, which is under Section 29. This means KYC may be required even for OTT applications like WhatsApp. In addition to this, there is a vague penalty when people fail to share information as may be required. The fine for this is Rs 25,000 after which a daily fine of Rs 50,000 can be levied on you till you are compliant. Further, there is a marked preference for biometric authentication in which the law itself under Section 3 sub clause 7 states that biometric authentication will be the preferred mode for establishing the identity for verifying a telecom subscriber. What this means is that this is another shot by the central government to force people to use Aadhaar as the single point of sign up, which means it may be made in effect mandatory despite the Supreme Court in the Aadhaar judgment striking it down. Now, as much as we talk about the Telecommunications Bill 2023, it is also important to place it in the political economy, which means the environment in which it is being passed. Democracy is today suspended in India. Here, firstly, a high number of members of parliament are being suspended and this prevents them from debate as well as voting, which means that the Telecommunications Bill 2023 has been passed without adequate parliamentary scrutiny, which means your elected representatives have not been able to question the government with respect to this proposal and the provisions within it, which increase state power with respect to shutting down the internet, providing for authentication for accessing ODD services, breaking encryption, and increased amounts of surveillance without any safeguards. Second, this law is one in many which has increased state power over our lives which are more and more connected by the internet. The Data Protection Act excludes the government from any kind of application but requires you to give more information. The Broadcasting Services Bill 2023 which has recently been proposed 
provides for a licensing power for the government over all news as well as entertainment on the internet, which means and extends even to YouTubers who comment on news and current affairs. Well, how can we forget about the post offices bill, which provides for any kind of interception of parcels and messages without any reasons in writing, which was even there under the colonial law. Or you look at the Criminal Procedure Identification Act, under which the government can build large databases of information which it collects in the course of any criminal investigation. Or the IT rules, which are causing mass amounts of censorship. And even then, the government has inserted a new amendment to it, which is under challenge before the Bombay High Court, where the government becomes the sole arbiter of truth, in which it can label anything with respect to reporting on the central government as fake, false or misleading without defining its terms. All of this is leading to the creation of a digital authoritarian state in India. Where the government has more power, it can define how the private sector will be governed as per its discretion rather than through a clear standard being set in the laws because all of the, the laws are vague. And finally, in a sense, not offering any kind of transparency as well as accountability to ordinary Indians like you and me. Finally, this law needs to also be seen with respect to what is the core challenge in telecommunications today. Do you know that telecommunications growth in India has stagnated and a large number of Indians do not have access to the internet and the number of smartphone sales has been contracting for the first time last year since 14 years from which it has been growing. And this year as well, there has been a single digit 5 to 6 percent shrinkage in the number of sales of smartphones. Or you look at the data of the TRA Act, which recorded a double digit growth rate through 2016 to 2020, which slumped to about 4% in 2021 and 2022. And in the first quarter of 2023, it just grew 1.7% over the last quarter. Now, shouldn't the objective of a telecommunications act be to essentially ensure that we decrease this digital divide, that more Indians come online, that more people have access to smartphones rather than one user having access to five connections or six connections in high tele-density zones such as Delhi. Now, have we heard a word from the Ministry of Telecom on what it is proposed to overcome the digital divide? Will these questions be put in Parliament to the Ministry of Telecom who's introduced this bill, Mr. Ashwini Vaishna? I'm sad to say there won't be a word on it for there is nobody left. The opposition parliamentarians are already suspended for this session. And to raise these questions, to put the citizen interest forward in preventing a digital authoritarian state from taking shape, there is nobody left to raise their voice. As the telecommunication bill, to my regret, is passed through a voice vote, not even to the cries of opposition members who may be able to shout, shame, shame, shame. If you're concerned about the telecommunications bill, one of the first things which you can do is to create more awareness around it. This video is also linking a lot of other commentary and analysis and you can share it with your friends and family. If my voice also sounds a little much more deeper than usual, uh, well, you can always blame the state and the central government uh, because the Delhi air is really pristine, touching around 300 AQI. I hope you're keeping better health than me and the only influencers you're suffering happen to be on Instagram. So stop doom scrolling. Thank you so much for watching Amalta's Talks. Till we meet again.